Now, uh, moving on to the road. Uh, as you can see, I was using my. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, there it is. I've got another bag of this, so <laughs> obviously loads of it. Um, I was just using some of this stuff. This is Hornby, um, and they do all these modelling um, stuff on the back that you can see. Now, the one I was using was uh, Cork um, Black. There. Uh, there it is. Um, well, they do two. They do grey tarmac, but what I'm actually using is just the uh, black tarmac, which is number. Maybe I should have done it before I started the camera. There it is. R8028. Um, and that's the Hornby number. And they give you this nice stuff here. And the reason it's nice is because it's not a single shade. There is um, black in there. There's grey in there. There's, a bit, there's actually a small tinge of green in there. Um, there's white in there as well. And a couple of shades of grey actually. And it just gives this really nice road look effect. Um, it does it like a brand new road. Um... But saying that, I don't. I'm not disliking that. I think it actually looks quite nice. It gives a real definite sort of bang from the green. Obviously, a lot of green here to the black is quite sort of instant. And you notice it. Um, I will probably be weathering this road slightly when I work out exactly what a 1930s road looked like. For instance, I don't even know if I have to add white lines from here to show the entrance from the uh, from the uh, goods area to the road. So that's just a quick example of something else. So yep, so um, moving on from that, uh, this is the ballast which I'm going to be using, um, or at least this is the colour mix I'm going to be using. Um, there's a problem with this ballast, I know it sounds weird but it floats, um, it doesn't actually float but whenever you apply glue to it, it seems to float and move around far too easily and it's just an absolute nightmare to make your ballast look good. So in here is um, dark grey, light grey, uh, brown cream and the odd white bit and it's a really nice mix so I'm probably going to buy some um, light grey, dark grey and um, a dull white colour ballast, mix it all together and that will sort of give me a finish like this and then obviously use that over the whole layout so um, that's, uh, that's it's actually a really nice colour in my opinion just there when I move the camera you'll see a lot clearer so then um, I'll just cover this area quickly, um, and what I've basically done is the basic scenery. Um, I'll start off on the road, and as you can see I've now got the middle sections done. Uh, is all I did there was use uh, 3mm foam, which is the correct distance between the top of the rails and the top of the track, it's 3mm. So once that was in there nicely, all stuck down and everything, I then put a layer of the uh, black tarmac, and it created this really nice looking finish actually. The bits between the rails, um, amazingly I had them in my box, um, you saw them in the previous video so is all I did was I paint them black because um, that was brown and that was grey, so they're all now painted brown, sorry not black. As well as that I painted the ramp which is this one here and as you can see there's a nice bit of brown in there, black roads running up the ramp and stuff which is quite nice. Um, I will be doing something to these gates, probably weathering them very slightly, just a bit of dirt and so on on the top of them because they are a bit of a bright white at the moment. Um, on this side of the track here I brought this up to level because this is going to have ballast between the two rails so I wanted this up a bit higher, it just means less ballast that's all. And on the other side here um, there's a nice bit of um, well greenery in the middle, just a little clump of it which is uh, same reason again. Um, it just give a little bit less ballast needed and it will give a really nice effect. So the ballast is going to come right up to the edge of here which will um, give a nice sort of slope away from the track and so on. Um, on the back corner here is all I've done is repeated what you saw just on this side of the gate. It's just repeated on that side so nothing really to say there. Same on this side. Now um, what you can see here is just static grass in this or this and this area. Now um, those static grass is just the base layer. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I need someone just to help me quickly with um, what sort of static grass to get. I need 3mm static grass and 5 or 6mm static grass. The 3mm static grass, I want it to be um, uh, sort of like a, a spring green colour. Um, and then the longer 
five or six mil static grass I want it to be more of a summer meadow sort of colour you know the sort of um, greens with uh, a little bit of a brown tinge in there as well that's the sort of colour I want to go between all these rails to make it look like uh, untouched grass it's sort of grown a bit wild um, obviously I want it to here and here um, and a little bit on this side here but um, not quite as much there, there we go not quite as much here as there's quite a lot of greenery in this section here as you can see um, I've actually used greenery to cover up the ends of the stations as well as I think as you can see just there um, as I think that sort of covers up the ends really nicely and that sort of thing you would see is a little bit of greenery growing off the edge of the station nice bit of static grass in there but that is only the uh, two mil long pieces which are a bit too short um, really to give the effect I wanted but there's a nice bit of greenery running up the middle up to the station I've done the same sort of thing here and here and quite a nice clump at the top here now once I put in the static grass um, the longer static grass I will add more details around this area so yeah that is um, about it for this update so yeah I'll just give you one complete shot um, and you can see everything quite nice it's coming along really nicely just the next sort of thing I need to get is the static grass and then I can start moving on to ballasting this foot or so of track and um, then I can move along onto the stations a bit more. So uh, yeah, it's come along quite nicely. Um, so yeah, so uh, I think that's everything to say. Um, I just one thing to mention is I've got a couple of videos coming up. Uh, one is on uh, Electrofrog and Intelfrog points that will be uploaded tomorrow, um, unless it's already gone live. I forgot when I set the date of it to go live. Um, I've also got a video on uh, drop wires. Um, for people who don't know, the best way to connect your track to the bus wire which runs below is something called a drop wire. Now, I think the best way to do it is to wire it to a fish plate and then to wire, sorry, wire the wire the wire. What am I on about? Solder the wire to a fish plate, drill a hole, drop the wire through, and then attach it to a bus wire. I think that's the easiest and best way to do it, as you don't risk damaging. Um, tracks and so on so I've done a video on that as well as that, that video covers how to solder um, because it's taken me forever but I finally have learned how to properly solder and to make it look good and work um, the uh, final video to mention is um, a little bit different I'm actually just about to check this to see if any of these videos have gone live uh, no not yet no, we're going live tomorrow then um, the final one is why I'm going to call it how to wire a dead siding.